The patrons have spoken, and they've sent none other than Halucha somersaulting into the ring, clad in full wrestling garb. This Pokemon first appeared in XY and generated excitement for its unique typing. Sure, Galarian Zapdos would eventually copy it, but was Galarian Zapdos based on a luchador with a color scheme based on the flag of Mexico? Nope, not even close. In terms of design, Halucha is certainly one of the coolest. Today, we'll be examining if Halucha was able to transfer this level of cool into competitive success, or if it was the one getting getting power bomb through tables instead. And so we ask, how good was Halucha actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. The first thing we must mention is that yes, Halucha does possess the only dual typed attack in the game, Flying Press, which is both fighting and flying typed. However, as interesting as this was, Halucha never used it competitively. One, it had more powerful stab options, and two, relying on Flying Press would add resistances where there normally wouldn't be any. For example, it'd be a fighting move resisted by electric types, which was needless when Halucha could run the stunningly powerful combination of high jump kick and acrobatics. The the latter move went hand in hand with Halucha's unburden ability, which doubled its speed once its item was consumed. In essence, Halucha wanted to get rid of its item as fast as possible. Of course, its speed was excellent even without the boost, but the boost ensured that no choice scarfer would come close to outrunning it. It didn't have great bulk, but it was by no means terrified of priority moves either. At high health, it could even shrug off super effective ice shards. For a physical attacker, Halucha's attack wasn't great, but fear not, as this was compensated for by the huge base power of its stats and Swords Dance. With an SD boost and its item consumed, Halucha was a formidable threat. It was largely overlooked in the early days of XYOU though, and found itself in the initial stages of XYUU, where it was brutally overpowered. It sliced through nearly the entire tier. Only Zapdos and Dual Blade could really stand up to it. Zapdos quickly moved up to OU by usage, and Dual Blade was a generally poor Pokemon players avoided using if they could help it. So for the most part, Halucha had free reign to terrorize everyone. One of its primary was Sky Attack with Power Herb. This way, in the quest to rid itself of its item, Halucha could do so by way of firing off the most powerful flying type move at its disposal. Sure, it could only do this once, but that's the type of Pokemon Halucha was. It's not like it could activate Unburden repeatedly throughout a battle. Plus, it only really needed SD, High Jump Kick, and Acrobatics. It had the freedom to play around with its last move slot. If it wasn't going for Power Herb Sky Attack, it usually went with a Substitute Stitches Berry set. Whichever it chose though, Halucha was a terror. The only reason it didn't brutalize Yu Yu even more was because it was very quickly banned. But of course, that was an early stage of the metagame. As the tiers shifted, Halucha was eventually brought back and given another chance in the suspect test. The player base cited its frailty in conjunction with its reliance on grabbing a Swords Dance boost as a major drawback that could be used to keep it in check. In theory, this was correct. But in practice, this proved itself to be wildly untrue, as Halucha found plenty of opportunity to freely set up, including against two of the most popular Pokemon in the tier. Here. Crocodile and Choice Scarf High Dragon locked into either Dark Pulse, or after it had dropped its own special attack with Jaco Meteor. This wasn't even including all the Pokemon it naturally threatened out like Blissey either. They couldn't exactly always stay in and risk giving the opponent a free KO just to make sure Halucha didn't get a Swords Dance. Checking Halucha was an absolute nightmare both in the team builder and in the battle, and as a result, it was banned to BL nearly unanimously for a second time in a matter of months. Oras hadn't even come out yet. Oras did of course change the landscape of the tier significantly, and the player base did consider testing Halucha again, but ultimately they concluded this would be a waste of time as the metagame did not possess the tools to withstand Halucha reasonably, and thus it stayed in BL, having sufficiently beaten the UU tier into fearful submission. Halucha was played around with in OU on a handful of occasions, but nothing really significant ever came of it. The tier's significantly higher power level made it far more difficult to succeed. Plus, Halucha's complete lack of contributing to its team's defensive utility and the fact that it could only truly set up once really held it back from inclusion even on the fastest offensive teams. It wasn't outright terrible or anything, but it generally wasn't worth using, and thus it wasn't used. Halucha's debut generation was a resounding success for it. The way it throttled Yu Yu was the stuff of legend, and players even attempted to recreate its sets with different Pokemon, but nothing ripped it up like Halucha did. 
Hallucer returned to Yu Yu in early Sun and Moon, and it was quite threatening, but no longer the metagame defining and destroying threat it had been. Power Creep had resulted in significant fighting type competition from the likes of Infernape and Terrakion. However, this was no problem at all, as it wasn't long before Halucha left Yu Yu in the dust entirely for the fields of OU. It didn't even need a ban or anything, it just moved up by usage because so many players had recognized its excellence in the tier and eagerly spammed the daylights out of it. So what was it that launched Halucha into OU stardom? Simple, the Tapus. While their various terrains were active, Halucha could hold a corresponding seed item that would activate upon its entry, thus instantly granting it the unburden boost. This was already huge as it meant Halucha didn't need to waste a turn or several turns to activate the boost manually. This was key in limiting the opponent's window to play around it. Additionally, nearly as important as the speed boost was the boost to either defense that its corresponding seed would provide. Boosting its bulk made Halucha significantly more difficult to play around, as it was now capable of withstanding a bevy of OU attacks. This was accentuated by the fact that Halucha was so fast after an unburden boost, it didn't have to waste EVs in speed. By investing a bulk, it made itself even tougher to take down. These qualities made Halucha absolutely elite at tearing through the rip-roaring fast and powerful offensive teams that were everywhere in OU. It out-offensed them like nothing else. Halucha's instant double speed had defensive use too. It could be used to outrun a boosted shift gear Magirna or Swift Swim Mega Swamper. This ability to act as an emergency offensive check to some of OU's most dangerous sweepers added a nice extra element of utility to Halucha's game, but it was far from its primary function. What it mainly loved doing was tearing through common offensive structures. It shredded fire, water, grass cores, didn't have much trouble blasting through most megas, tore through many auxiliary Pokemon ranging from Rotom Watch to Magirna to Tapu Lele, and most importantly, it absolutely dominated many teams' go-to physical check, Lander Ethereum. In fact, it often used Lando T as a point of entry and as setup bait. If one wanted to slow Lucha down with Intimidate, they were really just going to give it another Source Dance. Of course, Lander's T could tweak its moveset to handle Halucha better, notably the Supersonic Sky Strike sets. However, it had to stay healthy enough to withstand Halucha's hits, and a good Halucha team piloted by a smart player would load up on other physical monsters that Lando T would be tasked with handling, like Mega Mawile. Plus, Flynium Z Lando T was just one variant, and not exactly the most common one. Most Lando Ts just got destroyed, especially the most popular set, Choice Scarf. Some Lando Ts even started running Explosion just to try and do something to Halucha. And if Halucha's seed gave it a defense boost, then they better have something like Greninja's Water Shuriken to follow up. Plus, if Halucha was running Roost, it could Roost on the suspected boom and probably stay out of Shuriken range anyway. Halucha gave the most common types of teams in the metagame such massive headaches. Many offensive teams' method of quote-unquote handling Halucha, so-called, was to preserve their Mega Mawile's health and not to Mega Evolve it so it could get the Intimidate off. So not exactly reliable. Halucha was additionally terrifying because it was so easy to set up. It could be used with any Tapu, of course, but far and away the preferred choice for the role was Tapu Koko, who was a U-turn and Volt Switch machine that provided Lucha immensely easy switching. Some hyper-offense teams even used Dual Screens Coco for the perfect setup. If Halucha with just a defense boost was difficult to deal with, imagine it protected on both sides of the spectrum and nearly unbreakable on the physical side. Halucha also loved the defense boost from Electric Seed, letting its stomach hits from Pokemon like Mega Scizor with ease, allowing it to accrue multiple Source Dance boosts and rip through pretty much everything. That said, Halucha also loved partnering with Tapu Lele. Not only was the Psychic Seed special defense boost an Arceus sent against the ever-present Ash Greninja's Water Shuriken, but Tapu Lele also excelled at weakening bulky steals like Magirna into range for Halucha's high jump kick. Halucha fit on all sorts of aggressive squads, standard offense, dual screens, hyper offense, even rain teams enjoyed its presence. Another incredible trait Halucha had was tearing through Toxapex, fearing only an unfortunate Scald Burn. But even if Toxapex got a haze off, that wouldn't remove the Unburden boost, and Halucha would just keep swords dancing and blasting away at it until it eventually won the one-on-one. -on -one. It might not sweep after, since it would be held without an SD, but barring bad luck, it would remove Toxapex. And for a sweeper, that was always a valuable trait. Finally, Halucha's fourth move slot offered a ton of flexibility. Roost was the go-to, but Drain Punch was terrific for offering recovery while providing a more reliable fighting stab than the risky high jump kick. Alternatively, it could go with Substitute, allowing it to set up on the likes of Toxapex without fearing Scald or Toxic. However, perhaps the most devastating was Stone Edge, which utterly trashed a seemingly perfect counter in Zapdos, hit Tapu Koko really hard, and ensured Lucha wouldn't have any trouble against full health Tornado Styrian. Halucha could really do whatever it wanted. It was so monstrously oppressive against the offensive teams common in the metagame that at one point a few players genuinely wanted to ban it. Nothing came of this, but the fact that it was at 
all considered to potentially be overpowered was testament to its strength. Of course, Halucha had its flaws. High jump kick was risky on the best of days, and many a tantalizing would-be sweep was cut short by its infuriating 90% accuracy. To say nothing of the mind games it had to play against Protect users, such as the Heatran and the Ferrothorn, it theoretically should have dominated. That said, this flaw wasn't really present if Lucha ran Drain Punch in its fourth move slot, and as such, it often did. That wasn't its only flaw, however. There was also the fact that Halucha had to be careful with its timing, as once it was in and Unburdened was activated, it more or less had to fully commit to the sweep, and this allowed the opponent potentially room to play around it. Nevertheless, Halucha was an enormous threat in Generation 7 OU, and that's saying something considering how brutally powerful that metagame was. So all in all, Gen 7 was a massive step up for the Luchador, and it made an indelible mark on the tier. Generation 8's deck set removed the Tapus, and with them went Halucha's means of effortlessly setting up. Sure, it could use Psychic Seed alongside Indeedee F, but this generally wasn't worth it, since Indeedee was not that great to begin with, unlike the Tapus, who were all around superb. Instead, Halucha returned to its original home of Yuyu, and just like in its debut generation, it was promptly banned. Brandishing a brand new fighting stab in the ever-reliable close combat, Halucha was more difficult to play around than ever. It would gladly trade 10 base power for the perfect accuracy. It was the most potent set of sweeper in the metagame. There were many ways it could activate Unburdened. It could partner with Indeedee or Pinchurchin for their respective terrains, as they were far more at home in Yu Yu, or it could go solo with the likes of White Herb, which would activate after it had dropped its defensive with Close Combat or Power Herb, allowing it to unleash a massive sky attack. Plus, thanks to another Gen 8 addition in Throat Chop, Halucha could mow down even the dual blade that walled its stabs. Out bulking it with its tactics like Hippowdon or Unaware Pukumuku was hardly effective either. Halucha shut them down hard with Taunt. Its presence in the metagame was thoroughly overwhelming, and the player base was glad to see it banned. In OU, Rillaboom eventually receiving Grassy Terrain was of interest to Halucha. Here was an excellent Grassy Terrain that was a threat in its own right, and packed U-turn to get Halucha on the field safely. It took a while to fully take off, but once the power of stacking physical threats on Hyper Offense was discovered in the Isle of Armor, Halucha once again established itself as a premier OU threat. It partnered with with other monstrous threats like Bulk Up, your Shifu, Belly Drum Azumaro, various boosting forms of Como O, Dragon Dance Haxorus, and of course, good old Choice Band Rillaboom to blast through the opposition. Hyper Offense completely turned the metagame on its head, and Halucha was a major part of that. The playstyle continued its use and success into the Crown Tundra, which of course also saw the return of the Tapus, and Halucha rejoiced, reunited at last with its best friend, Tapu Koko, though it also continued to see use alongside Rillaboom and sometimes Tapu Lele. It was fully back to wreak havoc on OU once again, in much the same way it had in Generation 7. It partnered with several of the metagame's topmost physical threats like Weavile and Kartana for a nearly unstoppable physical assault, nigh effortlessly breaking through the opponent's defenses in tandem. Halucha had the particularly desirable trait of its flying stab absolutely shredding a popular physical wall in Buzzwool. Once again, Halucha came to define a significant portion of OU offense, being a significant threat itself and a hugely important piece of hyper offense and dual screen teams. It specialized in shredding opposing offense, but with Taunt, it was also brutally effective at defeating defense, stifling the likes of Hippowdon much like it had in Yuyu, while also ruining Toxapex's haze attempts and preventing Quagsire from successfully pulling off an unaware roadblock. That said, Halucha also loved using Stone Edge to trip up Zapdos. Halucha found itself fitting on all sorts of offensive teams. It was incredibly consistent despite its all-in approach, which speaks to just how good it was at doing what it did. Most Pokemon rely on such tactics, especially those those with such specificity of setup are frustratingly unreliable, but Halucha pulled both off with regularity, especially with the amount of switch moves in OU that make bringing it onto the field at an opportune time incredibly easy. To this day, despite being in UUBL, Halucha continues to terrorize OU, and is a significant part of the metagame, chalking up its third consecutive successful generation. Now in VGC, Halucha, along with a number of new Gen 6 mons, were of interest to VGC players in their team construction. However, Halucha was very much outclassed by the Conkeldor, Scrafties, and Mega Lucarios on many top cut teams in VGC 2014. And from the looks of it, it's not hard to see why. Halucha isn't nearly as bulky as fighting types like Conkeldor, and it certainly doesn't hit as hard with its base 92 attack stat, while Mega Lucario has a whopping base 145. Not to mention this was a time with pre-nerf Gale Wings. So Halucha's 
amazing speed even with Unburden, will fall to Talonflame, who is very common. Considering all of this, it's not hard to see why the only placements found for Halucha in 2014 are these placements, and it wouldn't see the light of top cut for the remainder of Gen 6 in 2015 or in 2016. But in Gen 7, Halucha's only placement is a great one, as it placed fourth at the Dallas Regionals in 2018, piloted by Sam O'Dell. Sam took advantage of Halucha's unburdened ability by giving it a Psychic Seed and pairing it up with Tapu Lele, giving Halucha a special defense boost from the pop Psychic Seed on top of its unburdened doubling its speed. Although Sam appears to have used Halucha as a utility mon, considering his was carrying Tailwind, Encore, and Feather Dance, with Acrobatics being its only attacking move. After setting up a Tailwind, Halucha could be annoying dishing out Encores and attack drops while his speed boosted teammates went to town. Then in Gen 8 for VGC 2020, Halucha's Psychic Terrain unburdened antics returned. There was a new Psychic Surge user in Indeedee that Halucha could partner up with to facilitate its unburden. Dynamax as a new mechanic was also greatly appreciated by Halucha as it could continuously boost itself with Max Knuckle while already having the double speed boost of unburden. Unfortunately, from the looks of its placements, once again, Halucha's go-to strategy wasn't enough to put it on the same level of usage or placement as Conkelder, let alone go past it. And considering Conkelder literally has a first place title at the Dallas Regionals, and even with Tapu Lele being allowed in later VGC series, Halucha has not been seen in any top cuts since. And that's where we are with Halucha in VGC. It does have quite an interesting niche that sets it apart from other fighters, but it just can't seem to hit as hard or take as many hits. And that's it, so how good was Halucha actually? Well, it's only been around for three generations, but it's been excellent in each of them for singles. Twice it's been banned from UU nearly instantly, and twice it's been a ferocious OU threat. It's as unique as it's effective, and that is why Halucha has its own distinct place in whatever metagame it's in. So overall, Halucha has had a great deal of success, and it's hard to see it not continuing to do so in Scarlet and Violet. Thanks for watching everyone, and thank you so much to our patrons for voting for this Pokemon for this month's patron pick and also thank you to everyone else watching as well. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Halucha? For VGC, what would you give it to give it an edge over the other fighting types? Would you buff it even more for OU? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.